Okay, thank you. Can, is it, I assume it's audible. It really feels a little bit distant from the audience, but I guess I'm going to stand up here and do it. Uh, yeah, it's good to see so many distinguished insights practitioners in the country, so welcome to KL. Uh, I'm probably one of the few Malaysian uh, local market speakers, so I can probably welcome you. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the findings we have from the study which we did last year called Lad Reaction. It was done around November, December. Uh, the study focuses on understanding the video viewership habits of the consumers and also looks at what are the learnings marketers can take from here in terms of making more effective online video ads. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of the data. It's, it's a presentation on video, so I'm going to let the videos do the talking. Uh, but if you want more information on any of the markets or any of the, any of the data, uh, the study actually covers 42 countries, uh, including Malaysia, um, and you can actually just Google Ad Reaction and access it. Okay. Um, sorry, I don't know what was that. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure. How many of you have heard of Mary Meekers? Has anybody heard of Mary Meekers? Yeah, great. I mean, you don't need to be really following Mary Meekers to really know that video is the future. Um, I mean, for all those who haven't heard of Mary Meekers, you, I would suggest you kind of Google her as well. She's one of the people who actually does these digital trends, and she releases her digital trends every year around April, May, and, and she's kind of seen as an authority in the market in terms of what's going to happen for the digital uh, future. Uh, so, you know, video is going to be really massive. You know, Think of it, 70% of all internet traffic is actually going to be video. Yeah, just think 70% of what you do today on the internet, you're actually going to do using videos. And this is just by 2017. Uh, by 2019, it's predicted that 90% of the internet traffic is actually going to be video, right? Um, so video is just going to be such a massive thing. Uh, when, we look at, when we look at the consumer's usage, what we see is that, obviously, what's already happening is that a lot of consumers are spending time watching videos. On an average, and this data is for Southeast Asia, you've got consumers spending four hours watching videos every day, uh, and almost 60% of that is actually online. So it's not traditional TV. It's actually across smartphones. As you can see the data here, smartphone video viewership is nearly at the same level as TV, as free-to-air TV. Um, so there's a lot of time being spent on video. People are watching a lot of videos, and they're watching a lot of those on online devices across tablets, laptops, and, and smartphones. When we look at the spends, however, when we look at the media spends, I'm not going to talk a lot of methodology. So this is a really a presentation where we help marketers to try and make sense of what to do and how to make better online videos. So if you look at the digital spends, the digital spends have kind of grown, but it's still a long way to go, right? as marketers are still spending most of their money into um, traditional TV. Yeah? So what this means is you've got this big difference between where the consumers are spending their time and where the spend is happening today, right? which basically means in the future there's going to be a massive catch-up game which is going to be happening as the media spends and as marketers move more and more towards online video and online video advertising. Yeah? Now, so, so there's no doubt. It offers big opportunities, but there are some challenges. Uh, number one, obviously, online video ads receptivity is lower. So if you're an online marketer, uh, you know that you know, it's, it's often consumers are not, while traditional TV advertising is more acceptable, and you can see these green numbers here. So there's more acceptable acceptance for TV advertising as compared to any of the digital devices. And at the same time, people are more accepting to view videos on traditional television than on online devices. So one of the big challenges is how do we get around this whole receptivity issue? Right? How can we make online videos? How do we make consumers more receptive to online videos? The other challenge is what we see today is with a lot of our clients, there's a tendency to just take the traditional TVC and repurpose it and put it on online. So you see a lot of traditional TVCs being put on YouTubes. Uh, and what we've looked at, we've looked at the data, we've seen that nearly Half of, you know, we looked at some of our top performing ads, which were doing, you know, some of the top 20% ads in TV, and only one third of them, or half of them actually, actually did well 
on online. So it's just a very different environment, right? And one of the big challenges, obviously, is that a lot, of consumer, a lot of clients are just using, a lot of marketers are just taking the TVCs and putting it online. So what are the learnings there, and how can we actually make uh, better online videos is really what I'm going to focus on. Okay, so if you think of online videos, there are three levers which we feel which marketers need to leverage to be able to make and more effective online videos, okay? There are three areas are obviously format, and I'll get into each one of them individually. The context in which the video is presented or which the video ad is presented, and obviously the creativity, the elephant in the room, the content. It's all really about the content. You know, we may feel it's about media, it's about the devices, but it's really about the creativity of what brings the consumers in. So if you look at format first, receptivity tends to vary a lot. If you look at consumers and how receptive they are to advertising or online video advertising, mm -hmm. it varies a lot by format. Okay? So Typically, consumers like to watch or view online video or ads which, are, you know, which give them a reward or in form of a skippable pre-roll. Um, so typically ads where you have an option to skip um, or a skippable mobile pop-up social click, essentially where they have a control, right? So what consumers are really yearning for is more control when it comes to mobile advertising, okay? Um, what they really don't like uh, is obviously, you know, when it's autoplay, uh, when you have, you know, Facebook ads which automatically start playing, the moment you scroll down, when you've got in-banner autoplay pre-roll, which is typically what we see sometimes in YouTube, and again, mobile app pop-up, which is when you're doing something and you suddenly have this pop-up, you know, download this game or click on this. And so those are things which consumers don't like. So if you're going to be actually looking at how do we make more effective advertising, the first thing is that you will need to give control to the consumers, right? The consumers are yearning for more control, and we need to think of how can we actually make advertising creatively so engaging that people would like to watch it rather than forcing them to watch it, yeah? So one of the first things is obviously uh, receptivity. Now, Interesting ad, I'm going to share with you an ad which, we, which is there from Audi, and they actually use this uh, format where, you know, typically on a YouTube, you've got five seconds, and in that five seconds, the ad, you have an option to skip the ad. So they use this as a, as a way to create an ad which actually was done within that five seconds, yeah? So can you please... good example of what they did to actually you know, take the whole idea that people will anyway skip an ad and kind of leverage the fact that it tied in with the whole speed concept that you need only 3.5 seconds. Uh, another brand which has done this recently is Nissan GTR. They have launched it on Wine. Uh, and Nissan GTR actually uh, can do 0 to 100 in 2.9 seconds. So they actually uh, made an ad on Wine, which is a three second format, if you're familiar with it. Uh, and they actually, after 2.9 seconds, it says, well, who needs six seconds? So, so really good idea, uh, you know, and, and uh, uh, kind of leveraging, giving the consumer control while also getting the, the message across. Uh, next is obviously context. The context is how are we going to be targeting? So who are the consumers we are targeting? And receptivity, again, is all about, you know, you target the right person, they're going to be receptive to the, to the advertising, to the online videos. Um, I don't know how many of you use iPhone, but sometime last year, nearly everybody who has an iPhone or an iPad actually found YouTube downloaded on their iPad and iPhone, right? Uh, he, Apple made a, a universal deal, and 
everybody who has iTunes downloaded, they automatically downloaded this YouTube uh, album, which was released, I think, in 2014, right? And it became a huge issue because, I mean, while some people love uh, YouTube, it's not the band everybody follows. Uh, and then there was a huge, you know, there were uh, uh, big uh, posts on, on Google, on everywhere, going on social media, how can we get rid of this? And then Apple had to create a special page on their services website on teaching people how you could get rid of something that they had paid a lot of money to actually install. Yeah? Uh, so the first thing is don't assume that people want to hear you. Right? So people are picky, and you need to be able to target people clearly. Okay? Sorry. So what we've learned is that if you're going to be making online ads, online video ads, the best way to target is linked to affinity. So is what people like. Right? So if I'm going to be, if I'm a, a follower of uh, football, then maybe you can actually show me stuff which is related to football. If I'm a runner, then maybe obviously I'm more open to advertising from Nike or Reebok or, or those brands. So it's really about what you're interested. Also the brands you are following. So if I'm a, a follower of Apple, then if you're going to show me advertising for Apple, it's easier. It's going to be, you know, I'm going to be more receptive to it. Um, so these are all your online, you know, your online search history. Uh, again, you know, there is a bit of receptivity to that. But what we typically see is, is people when they are actually, uh, we see a lot of these ads where you're simply being targeted because of your web browsing history, right? Uh, so you've looked for a certain website, and all of a sudden you see a lot of ads popping up around you. Uh, related to that, right? Or uh, when you were on, you know, on a social media profile. So they, they look at your Facebook profile and you see tons of ads which are floating around, which have nothing to do with you, but simply it fits the, the, the social media profile which this marketer has bought, okay? Um, so clearly, you know, receptivity is far higher, and if you are going to be expecting consumers to be receptive to your advertising, online video advertising, or you need to actually look at how we can target them more effectively through their interests uh, or the brands they like. Finally, it's the content, right? It's the, it's the how can we make more uh, creative ads? How can we actually, what, what are the tips we can have uh, for making more creative online video ads? Okay. Uh, now, what we did is, as a part of the study ad reaction, we took 20 ads uh, and we tested them across five formats. The same ads were tested across uh, TV. Uh, skippable roll uh, on Facetube and pre-roll, where you just kind of scroll down and the ad uh, automatically plays. YouTube and mobile. So it was the same ad being tested across devices to actually see what was the kind of response consumers give when you have to, to the same creative. And you know, what are the elements, what are the learnings we can have to make better online video ads uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, digital devices. So we use the framework, which is the link framework, which is what we do when we do a lot of pre-testing, so I'm not going to go into that. Uh, and it was done across uh, eight countries and, and nearly 10,000 respondents. So it's real data. It's not kind of theoretical learnings. Uh, this is something which we've kind of picked up. So I'm going to share with you some of the videos. And as I said, I'm going to let the videos do the talking. Uh, so there is obviously the reason why we're showing the video and what can we learn. So let's get on with it. So, there were three ads. I'm going to just show one of you. These are ads which actually, what we found was the engagement is the key, obviously, and en engagement driven by intrigue, where you're able to pull the respondents in or you pull the consumers in by intriguing them, by kind of building that suspense of what's going to happen next, what's going on here. Okay? And we found there are a couple of ads, and you know, this is one which is from Honda from Australia. Again, it did well across the formats we tested. Time to wake up now, Brian. Get up now, Brian. 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 Hey, Brian. Terry. Brian. Brian. Wake up. Whoa. Wake up. I said wolf. 
the all-new Honda HRV. The five-door compact SUV for wherever you dream of going. So really good ad. It was launched uh, when they were launching the new HRV. Again, as, as you said, you know, if you have an ad which is inherently creative and in intriguing, you will actually do well uh, across formats. Okay. Uh, however, having said that, and this I think is suddenly, this is something which everybody is going to remember after today is that mm -hmm. number of attention span of human beings is now eight seconds. Uh, and it's a second less than goldfish. And this is the study which was done in 2010, uh, or, sorry, 2008, 2010. And obviously, it's, it, they believe that since the mobile revolution has started and we've got more mobile devices, the attention spans actually dropped by four seconds. Okay, so that's what mobile's done to all of us. Uh, but really, what's happening is because the attention span is lower, the reality is that you have to beware the cliff. And nearly 10% of the ad consumers will actually see the ad, but most of them, even if it's creative, even if it's something which interests them, will simply skip the ad. Yeah. So you need to prepare for the fact that creativity alone is not just going to get it. You need to obviously think of some of the other things to make sure you can actually maximize the impact, right? Yeah, as a, as a, if you're a marketer, obviously you don't pay for the ads which, which they skip, but it's a loss of impact, right? So you've, got, you've created this nice ad, and, and if nobody sees it, it's just a you know, loss of an opportunity as well. So we focus more on impact rather than uh, you know, what's the money loss. Um, so the first, thing, the first thing we learned is when we looked at across what was the element which made that successful, and this was again looking at the online media, um, we found that the first thing was to be distinctive, to be different, right? Uh, creatives which are pretty similar, so if you've got a creative which is pretty similar to what, you know, like industry norms, if you see a typical, uh, for example, for diapers, you see a lot of mom and kids and kind of, you know, those ads are pretty simil similar, right? There's nothing, you don't actually see a lot of uh, impact, but when we, be distinctive, it actually makes, uh, you know, for much better advertising. Can you, yeah. Pampers Pooh Face, obviously, yeah, it's very, very uh, strong, creative, very good. It did well across all the online formats uh, you know, we had. Um, the other is obviously to try and be skip resistant. So we know people are going to skip it, right? We know people are going to actually skip the ad. How can we actually be skip resistant? Okay? Um, so this is an ad from IGA, which is an Australian grocer, and they actually, um, you know, let's play the ad first and then I'll kind of talk a little bit. Hey, 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 IGA now has a price match promise, so if you're going to skip something, skip the big supermarkets. Because with IGA, you won't pay more on hundreds of everyday products. You get the idea. So this ad did well. It's not very creative, but the simple fact is that it gives you the message within the first five or six seconds, right? So by the time you actually get to skip, they've actually got the impact they wanted, right? And the screen, when you open, opens like this. So you actually get most of the message what the ad is giving on the first screen itself. Right? So really good way of being, you know, knowing that people are going to skip and how can we actually make the most of it uh, before they actually get to skip. Okay? Uh, this is a good ad. It's from uh, OLX, and we'll just play it in a bit. It's, it actually did very well. However, we, uh, you know, it, was, it did really well on TV uh, when, we, uh, we, when we aired it or when we tested it. So let's play the ad first. Que isso, mano? Vai vender sua bike? 
Eu só quero é ser feliz Botar essa bicicleta pra vender na OLX Hã? E poder me orgulhar De ir com a tua avó de férias pro Ceará Desapega, desapega OLX So it, it, was, it actually did very well on TV. It was a good ad, and when people, we had people who actually watched it, uh, they really gave good positive feedback. But one of the big challenges, obviously, was that the first five or six seconds were pretty dull. Uh, you just had the old man there, and he's trying to you know, uh, take a picture of the bike. Uh, so one of the things here was that it actually did very well in the traditional media, but didn't do very well um, unless there was a forced exposure. So when we did it, in, when we tested it in an, as an ad pretest in a mobile situation, which is a forced exposure, we actually saw good results. But when we left it to people to skip on, uh, click on it, we didn't see good results. So the learning here is obviously try and get the engagement in the first five seconds. Uh, you cannot leave like in a traditional TVC. You've got the engagement. You tell the story, and then the brand's going to come in and be the hero. Uh, that really doesn't work uh, in 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 uh, the online environment. You need to be able to get the engagement pretty quickly. So when the old man starts dancing and when he you know doing all the tricks. You actually, the kind of engagement levels soared, but a lot of the people dropped off before that. Okay. Okay, and this is the, what I just said, right? So this is again, you, you, in a traditional TVC, you know, we've, as Mo Brown, we've done a lot of pretests, and we often go to our clients and say, you know what, it's not about at what time in the 30 second ad or a 60 second ad your brand appears. Well, in online, we actually can't say that. So the reality in, in the online is that the earlier you show the brand, the better it is, right? Uh, realizing that a lot of people are going to be skipping the ads after the fourth second or the third second or the fifth second, you need the brand to be quite visible as quickly as possible, right? Um, so this is an ad which actually did really, really well. Um, sorry, can you play that again? Begging Music Group. The boss is in the building. Yeah. Let's get that begging. Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it all day. I get begging, baby. Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it all day. I get begging, baby. All day I get begging, not just when I awake. Think I don't get begging? You must be mistaken. All you dogs be hating, these females just be shaking. To my owner that I wanted, now ain't in the way. Their mother treats so wet, so wet. Their mother sex so wet, so wet. All day I get begging, y'all just pay for table scraps. And I ain't breaking no sweat. Mm -hmm. Begging's just what I get. That's right. Boss calling them shots, y'all just get shots down with the vet. Yeah. Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it. All day I get begging, baby. Pop it, pop it. Pop it, pop it, pop it, pop it all day, I get begging, baby. You know who it is. It's the big dog. It's the boss. We getting this begging. Begging for life. Pop it. Share with pop your it. friends. And if pop you're hungry for more begging, it. check pop out it. this other video. Pop it. All day, I get begging. So very well branded, but the challenge with this ad was that most of the people actually didn't kind of wait till the entire end, but that's okay. It didn't matter because the brand was pretty visible in the first five or six seconds. So I think when the ad was made, they had this nice song and they wanted to kind of maximize the impact, but it was okay if people dropped off. And actually a lot of people did drop off, but if you're a dog lover and if you've got being, if you're targeted well, then it's an ad which you would kind of watch till the end. Um, so the challenge, the, the obvious learning here is that brand as quickly as possible, don't wait for you know, the 10 seconds or the 15 seconds to first build the brand up because most people will actually skip how, how much ever creative it is, okay? Uh, and obviously, you know, in, on, in the online world, uh, short is beautiful and better, right? Uh, and size does matter and you want it short. Uh, so this is a classic example and this is a learning which you can do from TVC to online. So this is an ad from Philippines which was tested in a in a, a full format, which is, was aired, and they wanted to actually take it to the online. And what they did was they actually cut it down, made it better, uh, suited for the online world. So let's play the first one first. Hey, kau yang di sana, bukalah semangat dan sambut hari baru. Oh, bagikan semangat bukawan. Indonesia. 
And so this is what was aired on TV, and they actually wanted to use it similarly. It's the, the same ad for online. Uh, so what they, and if you remember the TVC, there's a little bit of a start where the girl's on her own, and then she's thinking of something, and the friend comes, and, and then the whole brand scenario comes. When they made it an online ad, let's play the online one. So straight away it goes to the brand, you know, it's much more about the brand and the sharing of happiness bit rather than actually building the story about, you know, sharing it with your friends and, and so on. So pretty focused. Um, so the important thing again here to learn is that if you actually are going to be using an ad which is built for TVC, uh, or built for TV and you want to air it or you want to uh, not air it, if you want to put it in an online environment, you obviously need to think of these things which we've you know, seen today. The length is important, the branding is important, needs to be early, and how can you make it uh, skip resistible, okay? Um, and finally, if you look at Facebook, uh, the challenge is obviously the click to play challenge. So, you know, uh, on Facebook you've got ads and even if it's a really nice ad, the reality is what we found that only kind of 10% people will actually click on it, right? So if you've got Facebook ads coming in, in your profile, the reality is 90% of the people would simply not click these ads, right? So how can you actually make the ads more attractive? Because again, it's an issue of not how much you spend, but how do you get maximized the impact, okay? Um, so what we've learned here is if you're gonna be actually making ads for Facebook, it's important that obviously the, the initial visual, which is the visual which appears on your profile, is obviously attractive and it's of interest to you. Uh, there it's again, clearly branded uh, so that you can actually see what brand it is. I think a lot of these areas is what Rick covered in his presentation. Um, and obviously then it's got a little bit, you know, the, 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 what it says about the ad, that little thing which is written on top is obviously interesting and is able to draw the consumers in, okay? So this is something from HP, uh, you know, which is all about the art is beautiful, running out of ink is not. Uh, so it was obviously, uh, you know, if it's targeted to the right people, it's, it was very receptive. Running out is part of the pass. Ink delivered right to your door when you're running low. HP Instant Ink Replacement Service. Never run out. So again, very creative. They want the message was that you know HP delivers to your door when you run out of ink. Uh, uh, you know, and so some of the key ingredients for Facebook is essentially that. So you know, if you look, think of the three key ingredients for as a marketer for making more effective online ads or online video ads. Number one is obviously the format. You need to think uh, skippable formats. Uh, so the, the power is going to be with the consumers or, or the viewers. Uh, so you need to give the control. You, I think to think of kind of forced exposures uh, or you know, um, pre-roll is not what consumers want and kind of turns them off. If you look at the context uh, where the ad appears, then think of affinity-based profiling and interest-based targeting, which is the brand I like or it's my interest area. Uh, don't think everybody is dying to see or hear you, right? So forced exposures invariably can work against the brand rather than in favor of the brand. I think earlier somebody said how many, when you have kind of the Facebook, the frequency where you see the same ad 10 times, you know, uh, again, you need to think of, uh, you know, uh, the context which the ad appears. And obviously, creativity, you know, the content of the ad, how the ad's made. Think, be distinctive, engage quickly. So you need to get the interest, intrigue going quickly. Uh, brand early, um, cut to the chase, keep it short, and uh, try and make it skip resistant, <coughs> yeah? Um, sorry, that's about it, thank you. Any questions? Another very interesting presentation. Thanks for that, Nitish. <laughs> Questions? Getting questioned out at the end of the day. <laughs>